At 93, Robert Wagner finally openly spoke about his wife, Natalie Wood's death. The attractive actor slept with half of Hollywood and was married twice to actress Natalie Wood. He starred in Heart to Heart, a television program that contained the infamous line, when they met, it was murder, a fitted epithet given that Wagner escaped punishment for murdering his wife. Robert, age 93, eventually breaks his silence on the unsolved homicide case before disclosing his diagnosis of dementia. This is the turbulent existence of composer Robert Wagner. Natalie Wood It's impossible to discuss Robert without mentioning Natalie Wood, whose life and death are inextricably tied to his. In 1949, when the 18-year-old actor was flaunting his stuff around the 20th Century Fox Studios, the two actors first met. Natalie Wood, a 10-year-old child actress, was quickly drawn to him. The very young actress, who was born Natalia Nikolaevna Zakarenko, began performing at the age of four. After catching a glimpse of Wagner, young Natalie declared to her mother, I'm going to marry him one day. She did it twice. It may have been her demise. Natalie subsequently starred alongside James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause. That Sinking Feeling Wagner was cast in Titanic along Barbara Stanwyck in 1953. Later, he revealed in his autobiography that he and Stanwyck, who was 23 years his senior, had a four-year relationship. Worried about how that relationship could impact his image, his studio paired him with 18-year-old Natalie Wood. However, this was not Natalie's first prominent relationship. When Wood was 15 and Frank Sinatra was 38, she dated him. Sinatra's former assistant disclosed in 2003 that Wood was pimped out to Sinatra at such a young age by her insanely ambitious Russian mother, who dressed her in a body-hugging black party dress and dropped her off at his apartment. Sadly, Sinatra subjected Natalie to sexual assault during their relationship. Natalie was already experienced. Wagner and Wood were a perfect match, and the public went crazy. Robert's charisma and Natalie's beauty were the ideal combination to make them media darlings. During their cross-country road journey, radio stations reported sightings of the couple traveling down motorways so that ecstatic audiences could line the streets as they passed through American cities. Critics ate them alive. Natalie and Robert wed in 1957, when she was 19 years old and she was 27. Although the Wagner and Wood team may have been a media sensation, critics didn't like their 1960 feature film, All the Fine Young Cannibals. Natalie starred in the classic, critically acclaimed film West Side Story the following year. From the outside, the affluent couple's existence appeared to be ideal. They strolled red carpets, posed on vessels, and imbibed champagne. Behind the scenes, however, their relationship was turbulent, and they were always on the precipice of splitting up. The fact that Natalie Wood's star was rising much more quickly than Wagner's hurt his fragile ego. Wood is alleged to have had an affair with her Splendor in the Grass co-star Warren Beatty. Well, that was the official story. The true tale is considerably more scandalous. Early Scandal it was easier to believe that Natalie's adultery with Warren Beatty led to their separation than the truth. Lana, the sister of Natalie Wood, asserts that one day Natalie arrived home early and discovered Robert Wagner in bed with his male valet, David Cavendish. Maria Gurdon, the mother of Natalie Wood, described Cavendish as a much older gentleman with an English accent. In addition, she stated that the presence of the steward in Wagner's former two-bedroom maisonette triggered her protective antenna. The Truth In her book, Natalie Wood, The Complete Biography, 2020, author Suzanne Finstad disclosed, the secret that was interred the deepest in Natalie's closet of skeletons was the startling end of her fairy tale marriage to Bobby Sox icon Robert Wagner. To secure Wagner's reputation, Natalie publicly assumed responsibility for their abrupt divorce in 1961. While filming Splendor in the Grass, she allegedly had an affair with her co-star, Warren Beatty, causing her marriage to Wagner to collapse. She never refuted the rumors in fan magazines. Finstad continues, Eventually, the obviously fake gossip was reported as fact. A few trusted individuals were privy to Natalie's account information. 
three of Natalie's close friends, her mother's best friend, and her sister, Lana, told me that Natalie saw Wagner in flagrante with a man in their Beverly Hills mansion. Second marriage. Wagner wasted no time getting back on the love boat after their breakup, possibly to dispel rumors that Natalie had discovered him in bed with a man. While he was working in Europe, he reconnected with his old acquaintance, the famous actress, Marion Marshall, best known for her roles alongside Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. The couple spent two years making films in Europe before marrying on July 21, 1963, and having one daughter, Katie Wagner. Wagner's career, however, was in shambles, and playing second fiddle to Peter Sellers and David Niven in The Pink Panther in 1963 was not going to save it. Natalie Wood dated the sons of Michael Caine and David Niven around the same time. These boots are made for walking. His career was improving, but his marriage was deteriorating. In the same month that he and Marion separated, in June 1970, Wagner became engaged to Tina Sinatra. Wagner enjoyed spending time at his father's Palm Springs estate. Wagner was shortly singing Nancy Sinatra's most famous song as his boots tramped all over Tina. In 1969, Natalie Wood married Richard Gregson, a British talent representative. But as soon as Wagner learned of their divorce in 1972, he gave Tina her departure orders and summoned Natalie, who was six months pregnant, to his Palm Springs residence. They stunned the world by attending the Oscars together shortly thereafter. According to Wood's sister, the entire world felt sentimental about this reconciliation. To commemorate their joyous reunion, the couple boarded a yacht. Fateful Night After returning to the yacht, the three actors continued to imbibe and Captain Davern joined them. Wagner and Wood engaged in a heated dispute at the conclusion of the evening, most likely over her over-familiarity and caressing of Christopher Walken. On the morning of November 29, 1981, approximately one mile from the Splendor, Wood's body was discovered drifting near the dinghy. She was 43 years old. Blood samples revealed that she'd been drinking excessively and that she had fresh bruises on her legs and arms and an abrasion on her left cheek. According to the official account, Natalie Wood perished while attempting to board the dinghy from the yacht while intoxicated. But is this what actually transpired? Questioning. Wagner told police on both occasions that Natalie retired to bed early and when he went to check on her, she was not in her room. Due to Wagner's emotional state, detectives had to cut short his first interview. During a second interview, Wagner remembered that between Wood going to her room and checking on her, Walken had ventured onto the veranda for some fresh air. Christopher may not have been involved, or Wagner may have been attempting to deflect blame from himself. On paper, it appeared to be a straightforward case of accidental drowning. However, some aspects didn't make sense, notably Natalie Wood's dreaded phobia of water and drowning in particular. Why would someone so frightened of deep water attempt to board a dinghy in the middle of the night? Furthermore, that was not the only disquieting aspect of this investigation. Coroner to the Stars Natalie Wood drank seven to eight glasses of wine the night she passed away. According to the coroner's autopsy by Dr. Thomas Noguchi, Additionally, a mishap could have caused some bruising. Strangely, Noguchi minimized Wood's high blood alcohol level, injuries, and any other evidence that could have implicated Robert Wagner in her death. However, why did the coroner oppose implicating Wagner? Evidently, coroner Noguchi was already in trouble with the post-mortem he conducted on actor William Holden. Noguchi would not repeat that error as he had divulged too much information about Holden's alcohol levels in that instance. There was also a significant and nefarious link between the two murders. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. In the months following Natalie Wood's drowning, how was Robert Wagner coping? In any case, he was engaged in damage control. The boat's commander remained at Wagner's residence and stated that he found it difficult to depart. Wagner's attendants prevented him from departing his location, which was alarmingly secured. Why did Wagner fear allowing Davern to speak? How far could he go to maintain the captain's silence? Davern received offers for commercial and heart-to-heart -heart roles all of a sudden. Wagner then began offering Davern large quantities of cash. His peers believed that Wagner was paying him to keep his lips sealed. 
However, what did the captain know that he wasn't divulging? On many occasions over the years, Davern told the media he had the inside scoop on the Enigma, but he always backtracked, saying he couldn't share the secrets. Two mysterious accidents, two weeks apart. This may be a curious coincidence, but William Holden and Robert Wagner were not strangers. In actuality, the elderly actor was Wagner's heart-to-heart -heart co star Stephanie Powers, the woman with whom Wagner had such incredible on-screen rapport and whom Natalie was intensely envious of. Even more peculiar was that William Holden had also perished under enigmatic circumstances. On November 12, 1981, he stumbled drunk on a rug, cut his cranium on a bedside table, and bled to death. That was only two weeks prior to Natalie's drowning. Could reality possibly imitate art? As with Mr. and Mrs. Hart, was it a case of when they met it was murder for Robert Wagner and Stephanie Powers? Person of Interest In 2011, the Homicide Bureau of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department reopened the Natalie Wood investigation after numerous new witnesses challenged Wagner's contradictory statements. As a consequence of Davern's updated testimony, people believed that something was undoubtedly amiss. In 2011, 700 individuals, including Captain Davern, signed a petition expressing discontent with the initial investigation. Unsurprisingly, the majority suspected Wagner of murdering his wife. After hearing the captain's testimony and receiving the subsequent petition, the coroner modified the death report for Natalie Wood from accidental drowning to drowning and other undetermined factors. In 2018, nearly 40 years after her death by drowning, investigators identified Robert Wagner as a person of interest. Aftermath By February 14, 1982, Robert Wagner had resumed dating. That's less than three months after his wife's death. He was not romantically involved with Stephanie Powers. Instead, his most recent redhead was Jill St. John, a Bond girl from the 1971 film Diamonds Are Forever, whom he had known since the 1950s. Robert married Jill in 1990 after eight years of dating, and they're still together. His involvement in Natalie Wood's demise will forever overshadow his career. Legacy HBO released the documentary Natalie Wood, What Remains Behind in 2020. Natasha Gregson Wagner, Natalie's daughter who took on her stepfather's name, created it as a tribute to her life and legacy. Natasha has never suspected her stepfather of being culpable for the murder of his mother. Lana Wood is estranged from her nieces due to her belief that Wagner was implicated in the murder of her sister. Christopher Walken asserts that it was an unfortunate accident. In recent years, pilot Dennis Davern sensationally disclosed that Natalie was horrified for the whole journey and knew she was going to be assassinated. Robert Wagner's role in Natalie's murder will remain a mystery until, presumably, the truth is revealed one day. Until then, certain individuals will have dubious minds, just as the fine young cannibals predicted. A Tragic Beginning While many actresses claim to have had difficult childhoods, Stanwyck's suffering is incomparable. A stranger who was inebriated accidentally shoved her expectant mother off a moving streetcar when she was only four years old. The violent fall caused her to miscarry, which ultimately led to her demise from complications. Two weeks after the burial of Stanwyck's mother, her despondent and overburdened father accepted a position at the Panama Canal. He left her and her four siblings never to return. No Final Farewell Barbara Stanwyck was a habitual smoker. She began when she was nine years old and didn't quit until she was 78 years old. The special effect smoke used while filming The Thorn Birds in 1982 caused her to contract bronchitis, which persisted for years until she was diagnosed with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD. Barbara Stanwyck died on January 20, 1990, at the age of 82 from COPD and congestive heart failure. In true Stanwyck fashion, she expressed her desire not to have a funeral upon her passing. Instead, she requested to be cremated and have her ashes scattered in Lone Pine, California, the location where she filmed the majority of her westerns. <laughs>